We already discussed in the previous chapter about the basic principle of the electromagnetic wave as well as how to write the expression of the wave in terms of the mathematical uh, equations. Next, we will discuss what happens if the electromagnetic wave or the, or the plane wave travel through the different media. We will discuss these four different media. Firstly, we have the lossy mediums, and then we have the free space, then the lossless medium, and lastly, the conductors. So we only have a, this, a four different media. Let's uh, starting our discussion with the lossy medium. First, for the lossy medium, we will discuss about the loss tangents. Basically, the loss tangent is a ratio between the conduction current density and also the displacement current density uh, JD. So, when we solve this, we will got that the loss tangent equal to sigma divided by omega epsilon, like what we have proved in our uh, previous uh, chapters. And this loss tangent can also be represented by the tangent to theta n. Okay, we will see what, what is this theta n. Okay, indication of what medium we are dealing with. Okay, because different media have a different properties. For example, we have for the lossy medium, or we, we also said as a lossy dielectric so we have the the small value of sigma when we have the small value of sigma that means there is a leakage uh, conduction current so it has a loss when when there is a conduction current there is a loss for example the loss in term of the heat energy so for the lossy dielectric normally the, the we have the value of sigma but the value is still uh, very small compared to the omega epsilon. Okay, for example, we have the um, fire retardant four board FR4 that normally used uh, to design the uh, planar antenna. So the FR4 board had a loss tangent of around 0 0.02 or 0 0 0.02, something like that. It's very small. Next, for the good conductor. For example, we have a silver, um, copper, gold, and so on. So we have the sigma very large compared to omega epsilon. The sigma represents how well the electron can move inside the material. And lastly, we have the free space and lossless medium, where both cannot conduct electricity, so the sigma will be equal to zero. For the lossy dielectric or lossy media, so basically we have the value of sigma. Okay, the sigma is not, is not equal to zero. And we have the value of uh, mu, okay, mu uh, will interact with a magnetic field and we have epsilon epsilon interact with a electric field so we have mu equal to mu not mu r and epsilon equal to epsilon not epsilon r okay uh, this is um, the general equation of the electric field the e equal to uh, in the direction of x the e naught exponent negative alpha z cos omega t minus beta z so we already see uh, this expression except this component exponent negative alpha z so basically uh, this component represent the lossy part the lossy or attenuation for the magnetic field h okay we have the direction is y and the magnitude is H naught 
exponent negative alpha z cos omega t minus beta z minus theta n. Okay, we have theta n here and also exponent minus uh, alpha z. So this is also uh, the lossy component. And the theta n is basically the phase difference between the electric field and the magnetic field. There is a phase difference that we need to determine. And then we can find the magnitude of the magnetic field by using this formula. So it's basically the magnitude of uh, electric field in naught divided by the intrinsic impedance n. So this is the, the magnitude of intrinsic impedance. We will see later on how to determine the intrinsic impedance. Okay, the intrinsic impedance. Okay. N is basically equal to the third J omega mu divided by sigma plus J omega epsilon. Okay, because the sigma has a certain value, so basically we have the theta N. Okay, how to determine the theta N is basically uh, the ratio between omega epsilon and sigma. Something like that. Right, so this is uh, how we write the intrinsic impedance in terms of the magnitude and phase. Okay, and also in this form, the exponent is normally uh, represent the phase. Exponent j theta n. So, um, the tangent to theta n is equal to basically sigma divided by Omega epsilon because here uh, we can find the theta, but the theta n is different. So tangent theta uh, equal to tangent two theta n, and this is a loss tangent because uh, we have a sigma, we have a loss tangents. Loss tangent equal to uh, sigma divided by omega epsilon. So that means if the sigma is zero. So the loss tangent is also zero, so there is no loss. Right, for the lossy media, when we excite the electric field, what happened? So from the original uh, amplitude, so when it's traveled further away inside the lossy media, so the attenuation happened in the form of exponent minus alpha z is travel um, through the distance the f the further distance so the attenuation will be greater until it become zero okay so this is a velocity equal to uh, omega divided by beta beta equal to 2 pi over lambda okay this is a uh, just a simple expression that we already discussed before And then uh, the lossy media for H component also the same. We can see that um, the amplitude also becomes smaller as it is attenuated when travel inside the um, lossy media. So the pattern is the same, but we can see there is a little bit um, different in terms of the phase. So the different is depend on the the value of theta n. So what is the theta n here? How to find the theta n? Uh, here is the amplitude. Uh, we can determine using the E0 divided by the magnitude of TC impedance. This is a, the general equation that you have to understand and remember. And this is how to determine uh, the propagation direction. So this is a, a AK or AP, the propagation. And this is uh, the direction of the uh, electric field, the E field direction, and this is a H field. So uh, please stick to this uh, equation to to overcome the confusion. Eh? Because later on, I, I will show you that um, the slide using the uh, slightly different uh, expressions. Right. So we will discuss the attenuation factors 
phase constant as well as the propagation constants. When we go back to the general equation of E field and H field, so we can see that there is a value of alpha as well as beta here in both electric and magnetic field. And in this expression, um, the propagation direction is Z, but it can be different depend on the equation that we do. So the alpha can be determined by using uh, these equations. We have the omega set mu epsilon divided by 2 and in bracket the x the power of half minus 1. So the x here can be determined by using uh, these uh, equations. The x equal to 1 plus sigma divided by omega epsilon square. The phase constant beta equal to omega third mu epsilon divided by 2 in uh, in bracket x the power of 1 over 2 plus 1. So the dif difference is here is minus 1, here is a plus 1. The unit is also different. This is a uh, Newton pole per meter, this one is radian per meter. The propagation constant is equal to alpha plus j beta. So uh, you can see how we prove the equation uh, in the study book. I will not discuss uh, uh, more about this but uh, please remember, uh, please please take note that there's, there is a one final exam question in the previous previous years about to prove to, to prove the uh, alpha and beta. So hopefully something about the proving the equation you should take note. So we see um, the example related to uh, this, uh, this um, part. Okay, a lossy dielectric has an intrinsic impedance of 200 and the phase is 30 degrees ohm at a particular frequency. If at that frequency, the plane wave propagating through the directing has the magnetic field of H equal to 10 exponent minus alpha x cos omega t minus 1 over 2 x in the direction of y ampere per meter. And you have to find what is the E and alpha. So that is the information from here. This is a lossy dielectric. When we talk about lossy, it has a certain value of sigma. And the intensity impedance here is, we have the N and the, the phase. Okay. And then from the, the equation of magnetic field. So here is a H naught. So you can use the H naught to find the E naught. And we have here the attenuation factors so we have to definitely what is alpha and here x x mean this is the direction of our propagations this is the, the, the direction of our propagation x not z anymore so this is a uh, the oscillating uh, direction of h field is along y that is the information that we can extract from the equations so, uh, the general equation of E in a lossy medium, this is a general equation. Okay. So, we have the E0, uh, the E0, the attenuation factors, and the cos omega t minus beta x plus theta n. So, the E0 is basically equal to the magnitude of intrinsic impedance multiplied by H0 to 200 multiplied by 10 we got 2000 and then the theta n from the equation is 30 uh, degrees uh, in terms of radian is equal to pi over 6 you have to change to radian for calculation eh? pi over 6 is equal to 30 degrees and here uh, to make to avoid confusion you have to use the direction of propagation equal to the direction of the E field cross product with the direction of H field.
just use it use this and then this is uh, the direction you have to follow the x the y and the z and uh, no, no the z okay this is the directions for the cost product just follow this so uh, we know about the the direction of our propagation is from the expression this is x and h is basically y so what cost product is y we get x the x is here and our y is here so it's basically uh, from here to here right so it's basically z minus z cos y because uh, it's rotated to the the another directions that's why here the answer is negative z the loss tangents how to de determine the loss tangents okay the tangent to theta n equal to tangent 60 equal to set 3 and then we know that the, the uh, tangent to theta n equal to uh, sigma divided by omega epsilon okay equal to set 3 from the previous previous solutions the sigma divided by omega epsilon equal to set 3 so we can use uh, this information uh, here okay so basically this is the value of x the power of half because the x equal to 1 so basically so x uh, the power of half is also 1 so this is 1 we put uh, the value so finally this is the expressions we, we obtain for alpha and similarly for beta, we obtain uh, these expressions. Okay, we have two expressions. Since uh, we know from the equations, okay, um, here, this is basically the value of beta. This is beta. The beta is a 1 over 2. So we can use the information here. Since the beta is equal to 1 over 2, so we can determine the value of this part. Okay, this part. Okay, so this part, uh, because everything is equal to 1 over 2, so this part is basically equal to 1 divided by 2 set 3. We don't know what is a uh, omega, mu, and epsilon in this case, but we know the total is equal to this. Similarly, uh, because we know this value, so we can solve for alpha. Okay, because this is one, so it's become one over two set three. So we can put the value of alpha here. So minus one over two set three, and What's uh, others? Uh, we, we see the general equations. Oh, we have a beta. Okay, here we have beta and also theta n. So um, this is beta and this is a theta n. Okay. And the relation of E is in the relation of minus z. So we, we have here some minus the uh, z relation.